What's up guys, Pixels to Life here and today we are continuing our Photoshop 101 series and more specifically we're going to be looking at our selection tools. Now the selection tools themselves are pretty self-explanatory um, like the crop tool for instance obviously that's for cropping certain areas and the primary pur purpose of the selection tools are obviously for selecting specific areas um, to either resize or do targeted editing on your work but today what we're going to be looking at is how to leverage the rectangular marquee and the elliptical marquee tools to create the starburst effect that is extremely popular within design so go ahead and fire up your version of Photoshop and let's get started So as I said, we're going to be taking a look at the creation of the starburst effect today. Um, and why this is important um, is not only is it a popular effect, but also it shows you the versatility of these various tools in Photoshop today. Um, the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool will be what we're working with primarily. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to create a new um, canvas by going to File and New. Um, I just started out with a very large canvas here, 2120 by 1192. You can obviously vary that in any way that you'd like, um, but for this tutorial's purposes, I am going to stick with that. Now, the white background is not going to be any good because we're going to use white rays. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to use my paint bucket tool to paint this black. Um, and actually I don't even like the black. Let's select um, that light blue color that you saw in the example. We'll go ahead and change it to that. now. With the starburst effect, it's created entirely with the rectangular marquee tool with a little bit of assistance from the elliptical marquee tool and one filter. So um, starting out, we're going to create a new layer because we don't want to create our rays on the background layer. We want to be able to edit them individually. So the way that you do that is over here um, in your layers palette you will see this little square that kind of has the edge folded up like a piece of paper and that is your create new layer um, option so you go ahead and just click that and there you have it the new layer is, is uh, created so we're gonna go ahead and draw our rays here by just creating a vertical line across the canvas like so you can vary the size as much as you want it really doesn't matter the width as long as the height covers the entire canvas so we're gonna get our paint bucket tool and um, you can use this little arrow here to flip back and forth and toggle your foreground and background colors we want the white so we'll use the paint bucket go inside of our selection and click to fill that selection and then hit Control D on your keyboard to um, deselect. Now, we have our layer here, and obviously we're gonna want several rays, and we're gonna cover the entire width of this canvas with these rays. Now how we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the Move tool, um, one of our selection tools, and then we're gonna hit Alt to duplicate the layer, and then Shift to make sure that it stays on the same plane uh, because we don't want any variance um, in the layers. Now, we've got two identical layers. Uh, you see layer one, layer one copy, but on layer one copy, I am going to uh, paint it black. Now, the reason for that is the black layers are just gonna act as guides um, to make sure that we have even width throughout the canvas because we're only going to use the white rays. The black rays we're eventually going to delete once we fill the canvas. Now if I hold control on my keyboard and click on this layer one it will allow me to select both layers 
so that I can make an exact duplication um, of both the layers instead of just one at a time as I did on the first one. Then I'll use shift to um, drag, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I would use alt to duplicate the layer and then shift to uh, make sure that it's on the same plane as I said before. Now we have four layers. Now if I just hit control and click on layer one, it will only allow me to select that specific layer. So what I want to do is um, click on the very top layer here and then go to the very bottom layer and hold shift and click and that will allow me to select everything in between there. And then again, using alt and shift, I'm going to duplicate all of those layers and we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and speed up this process and just fill up this canvas um, as you guys do the same. Alright, now that we have our canvas filled with our white and black rays, we're going to go ahead and delete the black guide rays um, because we're not going to utilize them at all. So what we're going to do to achieve that is we're going to select one of our black rays we know this one right here by clicking the eyeball next to the layer to turn it on to toggle it on and off we know that it is a black ray so I'm going to select every other one um, because we know that those are all our black rays and we're going to remove them out of here so let me do that real quick and you guys do the same. All right, now that I have all my black layers selected by using the control click command, um, I am going to hit delete and that will delete all of my black rays, leaving me with just the white ones. Um, so now what we're going to do is we want to merge all of these white rays into one layer. So how you achieve that is again you select the very top layer and then come all the way down to the very last layer and hold shift and click to select all of the white rays and then we're going to hit control E on our keyboard to merge those layers. So now all of the white rays are on one layer that we can edit all together. So now our filter is gonna come into play as we go up to our filters option here and then go to distort and polar coordinates. And what this does is it pulls everything into the center of the canvas. Um, and you want to do rectangular to polar, not polar to rectangular. That gives you um, an entirely different uh, effect. But rectangular to polar is what we're looking for. Click OK. And you see that we have our starburst effect here starting to take shape. Uh, and I mean, really, you could utilize, you could use this as your starburst effect. You really don't need to go any further. But. I want to show you a couple of other things here with the elliptical marquee tool um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here um, in the upper left portion of this starburst and we're gonna kind of make a rough selection here so what I want to do is I don't want the rays to go all the way to the edge of the canvas um, because if I move this starburst effect anywhere else, it's going to look strange um, because these rays actually continue outside of the canvas. So if I make any alterations inside here, um, then I'll have some weird edges if I decide to move the starburst effect out of this particular composition. So the way that we achieve that is with the elliptical marquee tool, we've made our selection. Now if we just do this here, we're going to um, delete out the actual center part, which is not what we want at all. It kind of looks like a frame. Um, what, what we want to do is actually inverse this selection. So we want to select everything but what we currently have selected. So in order to achieve that, 
use Control Shift I on your keyboard by default and now you see we have this outer box selected which means we have everything selected but this middle section now we still don't have what we want because you see if we delete this um, it gives us these hard edges on the rays um, and that's not what we want either so what we want to actually do is feather this selection a little bit um, to kind of give it a fading effect instead of such a hard um, chiseled look so by going to the select option and then going to modify and feather we have our feather option here and we're gonna do 50 pixels now typically you wanna go um, a little bit lighter than that um, because it is a very strong effect but with such a large canvas we're able to get away with it now whenever we d hit delete now we have a nice smooth um, transition from solid to transparent which is what we're looking for now we've got a pretty cool effect going on here with the rays and uh, and you have a nice little starburst and you can actually go through and um, create a little bit of different effects by duplicating this layer um, the shortcut for that is control J to duplicate the layer in place if you're not planning on moving it like we did earlier you can just hit control J and it'll make an exact copy of the layer over the top and then we can you know play around with it by flipping it horizontally um, that gives us a cool effect um, that we like and we'll then we'll go ahead and pull this back into the center like this and then play around a little bit with the opacity to give it a little bit of variance um, and then we'll go ahead and duplicate this layer again and this time we will flip it 90 degrees to make it more vertical so you can see this is kind of looking like a like an overexposed photo but by playing around with the opacity of these layers we can come up with a pretty cool little starburst effect here um, so what we want to do is we've obviously got some um, a little bit extra on the edges here uh, and it's just not looking just right so we're going to select all the layers again by holding shift and clicking and then hit control E to merge those layers like we did before and then we're going to use our eraser tool now I have a pretty large brush here um, it's a feathered brush and I just clicked this little drop down menu to get to the brush selection and then I selected this 300 pixel um, feathered brush and I'm just going to go through here and delete out these uh, erase these extra a uh, little bit on the rays there and then I'm gonna go into the center of my starburst and just start clicking without moving just clicking and deleting out the center and there you have it a very very nice starburst effect um, there and you can uh, mess with the opacity to not make it stand out so much but that is how you leverage selection tools to create cool things such as a starburst effect. I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.